Hi there, my name is Aoife Rourke and I'm one of the Pond Development Officers for Antashka's new Legacy for Life project, which is funded by the EU Life Programme. The project has three distinct work packages, but today I'd like to int introduce you to our Ponds for Biodiversity work package. Ponds are defined as small shallow water bodies with a maximum surface area of five hectares and a maximum depth of five metres. They typically have less than 30% coverage of emergent vegetation. And ponds will have light penetration to the sediments if water clarity permits. They can be permanent or temporary, natural or man-made. But ponds are far more than just a definition. They're magical places. And if you were lucky enough to live near a pond when you were a child, you'll no doubt remember spending time catching frogs and tadpoles, minnows and sticklebacks, and marvelling at all the weird and wonderful creatures that ponds contain. So as part of our Ponds for Biodiversity project, we have two main aims. The first is to enhance the role that ponds can play as biodiversity refuges by supporting capacity development and expertise in pond creation, management and conservation. The second aim is to enhance public awareness and mobilise community consciousness regarding the amenity value of these small wetlands and um, how important they are for biodiversity, water quality and climate adaptation. So why ponds? Why are ponds so important? Well, over 50% of Ireland's amphibian wetlands have been lost to drainage, industrial peat extraction, pollution, and natural senescence over the past 100 years. Of the 12,200 small enclosed water bodies across Ireland, 8,000 are less than a hectare in extent, and the smallest categories have been subject to the greatest pressures. Ponds have been demonstrated to host more biodiversity than rivers and lakes, particularly when it comes to macroinvertebrates and less common species. And they, they support two thirds of all freshwater species, which is phenomenal, really. Permanent naturally vegetated ponds are excellent at carbon sequestration. Small ponds tend to sequester 20 to 30 times the amount of carbon compared with woodlands, grasslands and other habitats. Even the smallest ponds are very valuable habitats for a range of species. Insects such as damselflies, dragonflies, pond skaters, whirligig beetles, to name but a few, amphibians such as frogs, newts, natural toads, and birds such as moorhen, snipe, willow warbler, sedge warbler, reed bunting, as well as being very productive hunting grounds for the nine different um, species of bats that we have here in Ireland. Now I'd like to just talk you through some of the key objectives of our Ponds for Biodiversity project. The first is to establish a network of stakeholders who understand the value of ponds and are committed to protecting and creating new ponds, as well as managing existing ponds more effectively for wildlife. Um, what we wish to do is establish an adoptive pond network of citizen scientists and community groups to monitor and manage newly created ponds or existing ponds. We're also um, in the process of creating a set of demonstration sites across Ireland, showing off the best practice guidelines and how to create ponds that are, are great for wildlife and for people. Um, and also showing people how to manage existing ponds more effectively for, for wildlife. Another one of our key objectives is to engage individuals to establish ponds in their own gardens with clear guidance and tips. So we're going to be creating these, these guidance um, documents uh, and it'll be ongoing as the project progresses. Um, we're also going to create a portal whereby um, the public members can enter their pond location and enter information about their pond or the type of conservation activities that they're engaging in with their local pond. Um, we're also um, looking into providing a special award for the most pond friendly town or county in Ireland. So there'll be lots of opportunities for people to get involved in our project as we go forward. Ponds aren't just important for biodiversity, they're also really important at helping us to mitigate against climate change. Ponds play a vital economic role in developing ecosystem services, such as clean water. 
They can be used in integrated constructed wetland systems. So this is a system of shallow ponds. Um, the ponds are generally heavily planted with specific plants that treat water to take out nutrients and harmful, harmful impurities and discharge cleaner and pure water. There are a natural, environmentally friendly, nature-based solution to treat contaminated surface water. And plants such as reed canary grass and willow can be used um, in order to filter out these impurities um, to produce cleaner water. The, the biomass then can also be used, which is, is fantastic and it's a very sustainable solution. Um, SUDS measures, so sustainable drainage schemes often use ponds to manage surface water runoff, um, for example, by um, creating attenuation ponds. And these ponds, even though they're man-made, can be really, really important for wildlife. There are also um, sustainable solutions to support, help us to support climate change mitigation and adaptation, because as we, we've said previously, um, they can sequester 20 to 30 times the amount of carbon um, that other habitats can, can sequester. And they act as an asset in agriculture, particularly in the context of whole farm diversification. So despite the evidence that ponds can be a really effective tools to help us mitigate climate change, um, they have largely been under-recognised to date. So they're not mentioned in the National Climate Action Plan as a measure. And farmers were originally incentivized to fill up pond areas to receive cap payments. So this is time to be changed. However, there is not yet directly any rewards for creation of ponds on farmland, which is a huge oversight, I, I believe. Perhaps surprisingly, ponds are not actually directly protected under the Water Framework Directive, although some of the species within ponds are, so there's a grey area there. And certain ponds are covered under the Habitats Directive through protect, protected habitats and species in Ireland. Um, but, but what is a really, really significant concern is that Ireland has asked for exemptions for an unknown number of water bodies from achieving good status as required under EU law. Um, so we're, we're dodging our, our obligations there to biodiversity with it, within Ireland. So there are many ways that ponds can help us to adapt to climate change. Help provide us with clean water. They help us to manage flood control. Um, they're also useful when it comes to groundwater recharge. So groundwater recharge is a hydrological process where water moves downward from the surface water to the groundwater. Um, they help to ameliorate pollution and they're, they're a really important resource in terms of recreation and leisure as well. When it comes to um, helping with active roles in climate change mitigation, as we mentioned previously, um, ponds can store 20 to 30 times uh, the amount of carbon than woodlands, grasslands and other habitats. And they also help to capture excess fertilizers and pesticides, which is useful um, because these can be very har harmful chemicals to humans and to, and to wildlife. Effectiveness of carbon sequestration varies per site depending on factors such as substrate type and vegetation, and it also varies considerably based on, on their composition, the pond's comp composition. So, um, for example, permanent and naturally vegetated ponds are the most efficient at sequestering carbon, particularly those dominated by thick moss wards and aquatic grasses, because they help that helps lock in the carbon. Um, regularly disturbed areas, um, such as disturbed arable ponds that are shallow with lacking vegetation, are the least efficient at storing carbon. And management of habitats surrounding ponds also determine the effectiveness of carbon sequestration, um, such as surrounding grasslands, woodland border, etc. Ponds are directly um, affected by climate change also in Ireland. For example, heat waves can cause low water levels and it can cause ponds to dry up at times when they wouldn't usually be dry. Um, desiccation and erosion, habitat loss for species. Um, in 2018, the heat wave in Ireland heavily impacted newts and frogs. So newts and frogs, because they're amphibians, they breathe through their skin and their skin needs to be moist. So you can imagine in a heat wave, um, their skin is not going to be able to stay moist, so um, that can be hugely detrimental to them. 
Um, when it comes to flash floods, which have been increasing in Ireland um, due to climate change, um, wetlands can provide protection against floods. However, the floods can also bring in pollutants to the pond, which can affect biodiversity and water quality. And it can also encourage the, the migration or the, the movement of species, including non-native alien invasive species, which can be detrimental to native wildlife. The main take home message when it comes to climate change mitigation ponds is that they're a fantastic tool against climate change and they give everyone a way to take action. Um, people can easily create ponds in their own gardens and community spaces. So a pond doesn't have to be big, it can be very shallow, it can be small, it can be made in a, with a Belfast sink, it can be made in a basin. Um, there's lots of different ways to, to make a pond that will fit in with um, your space that you have in your, your local area. Um, they're also a great way to, pl to play the part in reducing um, greenhouse, greenhouse gases um, and they contribute to the global fight against climate change. So it's, it's all about thinking global but acting local. What, you, what can you do to get involved? Well, you could start to monitor your local pond using the following simple classification system developed by our friends of the Freshwater Habitats Trust in the UK. So um, this is a, a very kind of simple way to look at what kind of macroinvertebrates um, are in your pond um, by doing pond dipping. And then you score, score them based on, on this sheet here. And the scores will help you decide whether it's it's a pond that could could be better, whether it's a good pond or whether it's a brilliant pond for wildlife. Um, you could also consider creating your own pond. As mentioned, it can be as very small, it can be large, whatever you can manage. Here's an example of a very effective farm pond, um, and it's on an organic farm in Wicklow Town. Um, so there's an organic farm run by the Dominican sisters um, called Antarshak. And um, as you can see, it's got a wonderful um, uh, marginal vegetation, vegetation within the pond itself. So you see the flag irises, the yellow flag irises, and the native water lilies as well. Um, so absolutely stunning habitat. Um, and who wouldn't want to have this on their land if they were lucky enough to have enough space? If you wish to create um, your own simple pond um, in your garden, here's a few easy steps to, to start the process. So first of all, find the right location for it. So you want a warm, sunny spot for its location, but um, you don't want it to be in full sun all day. So a little bit of shade is good. Um, so first of all, mark out the shape you want. Use a plank and a spirit level to make sure your pond is level. And it's important to have different depths in your pond um, because different macroinvertebrates and, and plants live at different depths. So there's little microhabitats throughout the whole pond. So the next step is to dig the pond, remove any sharp stones and keep them aside. So they can be really useful to weigh down the liner if you're gonna use a liner on your pond after. Then dig a small trench around the outside of the pond to place the liner. Um, it's, it's often quite useful to use butyl rubber liner if you don't have clay rich soils that will hold the water. Um, that's the easiest way to, to create a pond if you don't have that type of soil. Um, then you add your liner and cover it with the large rocks. So the next step is to fill the bottom of the pond with sand and then fill the pond with water. It's best to let rainwater fill the pond naturally, um, but if you have to use tap water um, just let it sit for a few days to let the chlorine and other chemicals um, percolate out of the water. Then leave the pond to nature and see what turns up. So as with a lot of different types of habitat management for wildlife, it's all about patience. Um, it's amazing what will arrive once you've created the right conditions. Um, you would be so shocked at how many um, different species will start to colonise your pond um, naturally over time. So here's um, an example of a cross section of a good wildlife pond. So you can see the pond margins are shallow and undulating to maximize the different types of micro, uh, micro habitats um, within the pond. So the shallows are about zero to 10 centimeters. So they're a really rich part of the pond. 
lots of animals are found here um, amongst the wet, wetland herbs and water um, grasses. Then there's the mid depth, so that's where you find uh, tall marginal plants, so things like the yellow flag iris, um, purple loose rife, um, and floating submerged plants. Some of them like to, to hang out there as well. And then the deeper water, um, you'll also you'll have the oxygenating plants in there. So what we want in terms of plants in our ponds are native pond plants. So these are plants that um, have specially adapted to the conditions that we have in Ireland. Um, so here's a few examples of some native submerged plants. So we've got water starworth to the left here and spiked water milfoil to the right. And these are oxygenating plants, so they help provide oxygen in, in the water um, for the, the, the wildlife within the water. Next, we have our submerged um, plants with floating leaves. So these are a few examples of native um, submerged plants with floating leaves. So water crow's foot, curled pondweed, and white water lily. And um, these um, plants, the floating leaves are really important for lots of reasons. So um, species such as dragonflies, damselflies, newts, etc., will lay their eggs underneath these these um, floating leaves. So they're they're very important for um, juvenile insects and um, vertebrates as well. So here we have emergent, which are shallower species of pond plants, such as your arrowhead, marsh zinfoil, and water mint, which not only smells divine, also is great for pollinating insects. And finally, we have our marginal pond edge pond plants, such as yellow flag iris, purple loose rife, marsh marigold, ragged robin, which are stunning to look at, but not just um, to look at. They're fantastic for a whole range of wildlife, particularly pollinators such as butterflies, moths, bumblebees, solitary bees, and hoverflies. Well, that's all for me, folks, for the moment. Thank you so much for listening. And hopefully I was able to convince you of the importance of ponds for biodiversity and also for climate change mitigation. Um, please do look out for our guidelines that will be um, developed in the coming months. And also, um, please do get involved in any way you can when it comes to ponds in your local area. Don't be afraid to contact your local heritage officer or biodiversity officer and ask if there is some way that you can help monitor your local ponds. And um, please um, get in touch with us as well if you would wish to get involved with the project. Um, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. And just one more thing, um, for more information about our project, you can go to the following website, www.ontashka.org forward slash legacy for life. We are also present on Facebook as Antashka, the National Trust of Ireland. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.